Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, I know I'm a little tired to the party, but recently there was the Arcane Odyssey Nimbus C Q and A, which I'm very happy that it happened, which means the update's most likely gonna be this month, right? And I just wanted to do a little review of the Q and A because it's quite a lot, and hopefully I can shorten it. Mode be like 50%, so that hope. Hopefully this video does not exceed like 20 minutes or something, but we're just going to get right into it. So I organized my review in kind of like three sections because obviously the normal player is not going to care about lore, but I still made that the first section because some stuff in lore is relevant to gameplay and could affect future gameplay, right? So lore is the first section, which is pretty much like stuff in the world, the the story like the world building right and gameplay an example like maybe balancing and then misc is stuff that's happening outside of the game but still kind of relevant or was answered in the q a Ooh, trade request mm, guys comment down below w or l trade i'm gonna keep it kind of how our is that another player Oh, are you kidding me? Man. I hate having fight players. Fuck the shits. Why do you show me? Maybe I should take it out of this mode. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna switch to myself. Okay, I'm gonna take it out of this mode. Man, he's still not hitting yet. I'm gonna take this out of this mode. I don't need PvP. I have this one of these monkeys with the trillions of Galen Bounty, so... Like, how's this fun for them? I don't really get it. I don't really think they do that. I like how he throws me. It's just so amazing. What thrilling gameplay. In fact, I'm just gonna drown. Oh wait, I'm too far away. Let's try away. Wow, what fun gameplay, alright guys? Man, I'm gonna have to restart this whole damn section. That's where I was kinda embedded, I was also trying to fly. Aw, I'm so upset that he's actually gonna breathe. My bad, y'all. I don't think he'll be this much, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, we're back in a different server. I'm so proud to call myself a member of the Arcane Odyssey community. Where baboons will just jump you for no reason. Well, they have a reason. It's just not a good reason. Man, good lord, was that a waste of time? But anyways, so we're just gonna we're gonna kick kick back. So, lore section, right? I was gonna completely redo it. So, one of the first things we learned about lore in the Q and A, I think I don't remember the order. But anyways, so we found a lot about Ravenna. Like people were asking questions about the lore of Ravenna because we didn't really get too much of it in the main story. We learned a little bit about their culture and a little bit about some of the history and about Calvis. But other than that, we didn't get much. So we did learn that the last two rulers, Calvis and his father, both took the throne at an incredibly young age. I think Calvis was seven and his father took the throne at eight. And we also learned quite a bit about Arcanium. Which is kind of a reason why I wanted to say lore somewhat related to gameplay. Because there's more things than just this, but we find out that Arcanium is kind of like metal that's an alloy with salt. Sea salt specifically. Because sea salt is one of the main conductors of magic. It's also mentioned in the arcane lore that after like years and years of use of arcanium with the magic it'll permanently alter the effects and the shape of the <coughs> item right so an example of maybe any of the legendary weapons from arcane adventures those were altered by magic not any but a lot of them they were permanently altered by the users so that the sea salt in them would permanently conduct that right and people, we've also learned that 
people are able to create their own magics. However, we're not able to create curses, because curses are kind of natural, but we were given magic by Prometheus, so we're able to kind of create it and bend it to our will. We also learn of a very important character that I'm sure everybody misses, as we haven't been able to see him as of late, especially if you complete the story, is Ruby Roger. We can't, we don't get to see him very often. What the fuck is that? We don't get to see him very often because he progresses, like his story progresses parallel to ours. So I'm not sure where he left off when we ended the story. Maybe I'll look it up on Google and put it in the video. But yeah, he is going to come back because his story runs parallel with ours. We also learn a little bit about the creation of the towns and kingdoms. So the kingdoms take a lot of inspiration from famous real life countries and kingdoms. However, the cities kind of try to capture a certain style that Vetex and Tech were kind of going for. So as an example, Frostmill is kind of like a northern Frostern home, like just that style not based on anything. And same for Redwood, kind of Viking with all the pillars and stuff. <laughs> but as we can see with the new Sumeria, it's heavily inspired by the Middle East, inspired by India. Like, it literally has the damn Taj Mahal, or I don't know what it's called, an arcane, but you know what I'm saying. And we also found out, which I thought was incredibly interesting, I thought General Argos. We are going to learn a bit about him, even though he's dead and gone, right? Like, his, we saw him. When he was like in his 60s, late 60s, early 60s, late 60s, somewhere around there. So obviously we were going to beat him. But in his prime, he would have soloed the Bronze Sea. General Argos is not a joke, even though he is in his old age. Not even really, because he was still a hard boss. And he only really died because he got crushed by a rock. But it has been confirmed or express that it's wanted to be done if that general says Argos story is expanded upon so maybe it's possible that we'll see future relatives of general Argos or I'm not sure I think the only thing that could be done is maybe relatives we do know that also the main story group of NPCs or characters it, there's Iris currently right now Iris Morden Neviro and kind of I forgot his name, but the blue fire dude. How to forget his name, whatever. But we have been it has been confirmed that there will be three new story characters confirmed in the Nimbus Sea. And I'm not it hasn't been said when we'll get them, just know that we will get them in the Nimbus Sea story. And we've also been confirmed that another main character, like in the group, not us, will never get a curse, but another main character NPC in the group is also going to get a curse. And when I was thinking about this, right, like, I don't know if you can have multiple curses, but if you can, I was thinking since Morden's title is just the curse thief or stealer, I forgot what it was specifically, it would be very interesting if he was able got two curses. But obviously we're not sure. I think it's much more likely, however, that one of the new people that are going to join the group are going to pre-come with a curse it's also been shown like people were showing interest like in our main character's backstory and the devs express well the devs expressed that they didn't exactly want to make a clear and cut <coughs> backstory for the main character because it's intended that you put yourself in the role of the main character but with stuff that happened to us morden and tucker like the experiments will be expanded upon and kind of more of our past of being experimented upon will be more relevant at some point tying back to the arcanium stuff we did learn that sunken gear it became permanently al it altered because it was in the sea for such a long time and it is also arcanium so just being in the sea for decades decades long who know maybe even a century or two affected the armor so that it is permanently imbued with magic, specifically water magic. Spirit magic 
which is kind it's effective it's the vitality stat it's not implemented in the game yet however in lore we learned that the only way to wield spirit magic is to have a spirit weapon and that's not just like any random old weapon like someone's changed spirit weapons are weapons that were blessed by the gods i mean and since there hasn't been a lot of contact with the gods they're kind of dying out a lot of spirit weapons are really old artifacts so you'll be seeing people maybe in the near future when spirit weapons are added it's like people with thou hundreds thousand year old weapons that have just been blessed by the gods to control that spear magic because people can't they can control mat destruction magic because spear magic and normal magic are kind of separated in the two groups spirit magic is creation and magic magic is destruction and we humans were given the gift of by prometheus to wield magic magic however we can only gods can wield both spirit magic and magic magic something about past um aa lore is that <coughs> when they were making it they kind of didn't have a lot of story or stuff planned out they kind of just want to do a bunch of islands with a magic system so when they went back to make the story in the lore a kind of more um fleshed out world they had to retcon and add a lot of stuff in the back end that they didn't even plan on doing or didn't think of at the time. We also learned about Tucker, which is the dude at the end. I mentioned him earlier in the video. He's the dude that's dead at the beginning of the story. We learned that he was also special just like us and Warden. However, his experimenting was presumably the most harsh, which is why he's died when we got freed. We also learned of future islands in the Third Sea. And the main island there is going to be Jotunheim. And it is estimated that Jotunheim is going to be twice as large as Samira. And Samira, I think, has been said that it's going to be around the same size as World of Magic. Which is huge. That's maybe four times? No. My, my, much bigger than Ravenna. Maybe at least five times more, I think. Another thing that made me a little sad was that <coughs> the Dark Sea in lore, no one goes there or does anything there, right? So it's never going to take... Pl None of the story is ever going to be in the Dark Sea. There's only been one reference to the Dark Sea in the main story, and it's when Morden got the death curse by going into the first zone of the dark sea <laughs> because that's where the death curse was located what the last thing that we learned about lore is the player and canonically outside of player like real life player intervention the in-game character main character would canonically be a lightning user and he would also be a savant, since he has the ability to use vitality, magic, fighting style, and weapon, he will. So canonically, he is a savant. And with that being said, lore is going to be officially done for the Q&A review. Now, I do want to put some final thoughts. I do like how we did get a lot of extra information that can't be noted in the- or found in the story. <coughs> As of right now, at least could possibly be assumed with a little investigation. I do wish that we got a little bit more, like a lot more specifics. Like I wish we learned a bit more about certain characters like maybe Iris or Morden. Uh, there's a lot of questions about the MC, which doesn't make a lot of sense because he's perp- It should be expected that he's purposely left to discussion so that the player can decide for themselves but i did also want to know a little bit more information on islands dark sea doesn't have like the craziest lore like obviously the stuff going on with the atlanteans and the islands so I'm, I'm happy we didn't see a lot of dark sea lore not because i don't want it but because it's just to be assumed that there isn't going to be much of it nobody goes there the only lore that even matters for the dark sea is how it was created in the fight between the the two big mages from arcane adventures i think i don't exactly remember their names but yeah i just wish i got more 
kind of like main and side character information and kind of more information about the islands we previously got and i am hoping actually for a bronzy expansion with that being said we can move on to the gameplay section i don't know what this was referencing but i still noted it down i think this is a spell from arcane adventures magic shield will be coming back so i'm assuming it's going to functionally work just like the shield weapon but it'll give it as an option to mage players i'm guessing i'm not sure because i never played the original arcane adventures so i'm not confident in what it does we do also know we got a little bit more on lost magics they're going to be obtained in a lot of different ways they we haven't been told about any but they said let us cook and so we kind of just been silenced by that but it is to be there's going to be multiple ways and we've been told there might be a pity system for lost magics it's also been said that there will be no more base magics added which i mean i'm not sure what anyone would want they should all be added as lost magics now it's also been said that there's going to be plans to one day give the ability to the players to change their magic like how you can change your farting style you'd be able to change your magic so that if you wanted to you're not like permanently stuck and have to create a new slot or something which is nice for players who played through it did everything but then they don't like the current magic that's a it's a very nice option to have there's also plans to add an intensity rework so intensity i have some on my build just because my build's kind of shitty but i think I mean, it's a lot of power. It's kind of an all-rounder, which makes it a little mid. But that's besides the point. So there is intensity. And as we can see here, increase certain aperture severe your attacks, such as length of status effects, the size of puddles, the size of clouds, and the size of rubber. Reduce small amount of tool lens and more. So it is a mouthful of status effect. It's not just like health, damage, speed, attack speed. It's a lot more ambiguous. And it has just a bunch of random effects umbrellaed into it but it is going to get a rework and the idea for the rework i think it was reduction on attack cooldowns <coughs> which i mean that'll mostly just affect ultimate cooldown because if you look here it's not like stuff has the craziest cool one two three it's like maybe three seconds so may i don't know maybe if you want to like machine gun something then you can do that after the intensity i have no idea and it's also been said that there's going to be more puzzles and parkour because we haven't gotten a lot of that. We have gotten like tiny, really tiny, really minuscule puzzles for secrets. I don't even think we've... Now, we haven't actually had a real puzzle, have we? Like the biggest puzzle we have is maybe breaking a wall to get somewhere. But that's not even really a puzzle, right? So I think it is plans to have more puzzles for my interesting word world selection and parkour. But by parkour, I don't mean if they like actual player and parkour. Or like, you know, when you're walking along and you see the little poles and you just jump on them and it's automatic. I have no idea. There's also plan to never be console or mobile support. And it's not to be like mean or rude or kind of single out those players. It's because there's so many inputs, it just wouldn't work on mobile. Like, look, there's no, like, there's no feasible way you're going to do this. There's shift, dodge, they use the same button, by the way, jump, high jump. <coughs> there's keybinds for the menu buttons, which you could say they don't matter. And I, I agree. I don't even use them. But there's also all of the hotbar. You have four different hotbars. I haven't even seen a mobile game that supports three options for your hotbar over three. Like it's at maximum is three. And you have to go into your like little inventory up here to access more. And on top of this, if you look at magic, one, two, three, four, five, six keybinds. One, two, three, four keybinds. One, two, three, four keybinds. One, two, three, four. And, I mean, you can count mouse button if you want, but that's still three keybinds. And ac across four different, like, weapons or magics, that's insane to put on a con-
My bad. I thought this was going to be another player jumping me. I was going to... Wait. Edit that out, future me. It's also been noted that there will never be private servers because there's a... There's a lot of... My bad. I think I thought he was trying to block me or something. There's would be a lot of cheese with it. <coughs> such as, like, farming stuff or being able to avoid bounties. Like, some... <coughs> Somebody with like, I mean, it's going to get changed, but somebody with like the quadrillions of bounty going into a private server to hide themselves and not lose bounty. That's one reference for cheesing. And we do know how that you can imbue when you get a fine stellar magic, you can imbue it, right? It will be said that when spirit magic is eventually added, you will be able to stack spirit magic with another imbuement because it counts as a different imbuement so for example if you are a vitality mage and weapon savant you could imbue the vitality into like the spirit magic and the magic magic into your weapon and i think if you went vitality and magic you'd be able to imbue your spirit magic and tear magic i'm pretty sure because since they're different you can stack them differently and i'm sure all of us have seen the videos of rail Seas. if you know what rail Seas is it's an upcoming one piece game by the same people who made shindo life they made something for their ships so that when it's moving as you can see here when you jump you'd follow the ship's physics and keep its momentum it, it, I think when last time it was shown, it was a little choppy, but I think it's improved. I'm not sure. But it is said that this will never be added since it's a lot of time and effort to create this system and code it and script it and everything. Especially with just one scripter. But it's also not necessary as he, I mean, he said that if you're in combat, just stop the ship. Like that's the intended way of doing it. And we did also have some notes on future weapons that want to be added, but they're not sure of yet because they don't know how they'd model and animate it. <laughs> but pretty much chain and whip weapons are definitely a want by the devs to be added in the future. There's also, I mean, we saw it before on the Trello and everything. It's obvious, but in the Nimbus Sea, there's going to be more armor. And specifically, more armor like this, like knight armor and metal armor. <laughs> and it, it is intended as a future product, as like a way to spend Robux. If you complete the story already on a previous slot beforehand, if you go on to a new slot, you'll be able to pay like um, a Robux product to be able to skip story and skip leveling. Like you could get to max level after doing it once before on a new slot. But yeah, you could skip to max level with a prod, like Robux and stuff, which makes it a lot more convenient to first starting a new slot. And we have also seen in the addition of the new C, the Nimbus C, there's going to be three new stats. And there are plans to make even more stats. However, Vetex, he wanted to limit the amount of stats he added this update because it'd be overwhelming to add like 20 whole new stats and he thought it'd just make more sense to wait until adding more like in a future scene maybe or even later before the end of the nimbus sea who knows and it's also said that the dark sea will get more islands and new stuff as the sea is like the dark sea's not it's not completely done it's gonna get more updates as the seas progress and it's also been said just like how Lost Scrolls are being progressively added and how Dark Sea is progressively being updated. There's also going to be progressively added Lost Magics. Because it'd be overwhelming to add like 50 Lost Magics in an update. That's Then they'd literally never come. So they'd be added regularly over time. We do also know that Kulking is being expanded upon. And we see this already. That in the change logs on the Trello. We can see that there's new recipe types and smoothies. I'm not sure if they plan on having more in-depth expansions other than that to cooking. But it, 
I do like the addition of the smoothie. There will be exactly one boss fight in the Nimbus Sea on the update, because it's part one of the Nimbus Sea in the update logs, so it's not... Obviously, the Nimbus Sea is not completely done. It has a lot more to go. However, we will get one boss fight before the end of Nimbus Sea part one, which is nice. We have also got an intended feature everyone's been waiting for is the auction house <coughs> which i think was actually in world of magic but it was incredibly glitchy and buggy i might be wrong but there is a dude working on it it's not vet tech so it's being developed completely on the side but the problem with it is that vet tech's mentioned it himself when the auction house is added <coughs> because it's kind of like a trading hub or not really a trading hub, but like a trading center, an auction house, if you will, across every server. That means that there has to be a completely separate server from the game managing this data and systems, which is incredibly hard to do, as said by Vedic. So the person working on it still needs more time. But by the time Nimbus C Part 1 comes out, it'll be fully realized and because they're still trying to figure out if it would even work because it might not even work in the first place but it is said that we will get it eventually at the very least and some another thing from world of magic is that there's not going to be any walking townsfolk as they were uh, because that's just that's just prone to memory leaks make the game laggier frame drops ping drops everything drops just make it's just worse for the game but it will be said that there'll be more randomly generated events like bandit camps or government camps from World of Magic. That is to be expected to be added. However, no walking townsfolk. And we have also seen that because of a lot of problems with Roblox Dev Studio, Vetex mentioned he wanted to add a system. He didn't even explain what it was. He kept it secret, presumably so that he could hopefully one day add it in the future. He was working on it, and he decided to completely scrap it because it wasn't possible within Roblox Studio. And the final thing that we learned about gameplay is that crew members will never be able to fight like an enemy pirate ship. However, quartermasters, when we get the ability to build for clan islands, quartermasters are going to get the opportunity to fight with their own abilities to defend your base and stuff. And that's the end with a lot of the gameplay mechanics. I am, I do like the gameplay changes. There wasn't anything balancing mentioned, but there is a balancing document. I can go over that in another video if you want. It is a little hard for me to cover though, since I'm not really that involved in Arcane Odyssey PvP, but I do dabble in it a little. So I think I could explain and expand upon stuff in the balancing document quite well. But yeah, I thought the stuff we learned about gameplay was really cool. I do wish that we kind of got a couple more ideas or stuff learned about Lost Scrolls. Or maybe confirmed Lost Magics, because we don't even know what the first ones are going to be. So yeah, the, here's the Mystic section now. I mean, we circled back to where we started. There's not a lot in the Mystic section that's kind of prevalent it's really just random stuff that vetex mentioned outside of the games or like anything at all to do with the games well not exactly nothing but there's just two things there's never going to be new testers so i can never be like skelly torch and test out arcane odyssey unfortunately <sighs> and it has been stated that arcane odyssey will be the last project by arcane odyssey but let's not fret over that because Arcane Odyssey is going to take years before it's fully realized and finished and the whole story is completed. And that's not the end of the Arcane Universe because Vetex does plan on becoming an author and book writer for stuff that happens in the Arcane story when he finishes the game. What the hell? Why won't let me fish? Am I lagging? Why won't let me pick up anything? I must have been lagging. <coughs> but... Yeah, it is a shame that there won't be any games, but I can understand the sentiment. He's created, he's created quite popular and nostalgic Roblox games, and he pretty he said like he if he had the chance to 
make an entirely new game with new story, new systems, new everything, he wouldn't do it. Because there's just a lot that's involved with that. So, now we're going to be in the credit section. <laughs> I, I didn't know I was going to do this, I just know I wanted one. But pretty much, I just want to say thank you if you watched this entire video. I mean, if you skip to the end, that's cool too. Because I doubt there's a lot of people who just skip to the end just to see the credits. <coughs> but I do know I was a little late. Because I've been really busy. I'm, I'm just a busy person, unfortunately. I wish I could make more videos. But, um... Yeah. I am excited to play Nimbus C. Hopefully, if any of y'all are interested in it, I do want to stream Nimbus C when it drops. There also has been that new, uh pokemon-esque game that i also want to try i'm not going to stream it because i mean all the streams already happened it's over <coughs> but i do plan on making a series at the very least on it or videos and also if you want more arcane odyssey videos specifically such as fastest way to do deckhands fastest way to do anything best way to do something how to do this you know stuff like that then i'm definitely able to do that and i don't i'd want to make videos like that so if you have any questions or ideas make sure to put it in the comments below and if you liked and enjoyed the video make sure to like and subscribe i'll see y'all in the next video